President Mohammed Buhari is on the road again, this time to the UK and Saudi Arabia. Some are concerned he is traveling too much. And the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, has been previously treated like an automated telemachine. This is according to the minister. This is PLOS Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. Very glad you could join us. Now, President Muhammad Buhari, who has been previously accused of spending over one third of his first three years in office outside Nigeria, has traveled to Saudi Arabia to attend the third edition of the Future Investment Initiative organized by the Saudi's Public Investment Fund. The president only just returned from a three day Russia Africa summit that took place in Sochi, Russia. Whenever Mr. President goes on these trips, he is accompanied by an entourage of public officials and the expenditures are never made public joining us to discuss this or rather is a legal practitioner and a familiar face on this program um barista obi Adjebo. thank you very much nice for joining us Niger Delta Minister, mm -hmm. the famous Godswill Akbabio from Akwaibum State, is making rather disturbing statements. Let's start with his comment about the NDDC being used as an ATM machine by some people and not being seen as um, um, uh, an interventionist uh, agency that it should be. Do you agree and why? I would say yes and I would say no. What, um, how, why did NDDC come up? It came up as a result of the cry of the people that are giving us this crude oil, that they are, they are, they are being marginalized. So the government now said, let, let us set up this, let us see, get some specific pro, um, projects and use it to fund it so that the place will look as it were. So to some naive people, it is like government has given us money to share. Okay, so I'm just preempting the conversation to the Niger Delta minister. Mm. Let's look at what we just um, recapped. President Muhammad Buhari mm. has traveled again, and this time people are saying, I mean, he's been, he's left this country for over 40 countries. He's visited over 40 countries in his time, uh, some African countries repeatedly. And since March, he has traveled like four times out of this country. 15 days consecutively and one third of his first uh, three years in office people said he spent it outside the conversation is back again because aside from going to saudi arabia he's going to move on to the uk on a private visit what is your reaction to those that say he is spending too much time outside the shores of this country it is um first of all um you know every every government official that goes on tour with him is entitled to a per diem, which means a daily amount of money which they are paid, which is independent of their salary. And let's say let's say you stay thirty days, you collect one one thousand dollars per day. You can imagine how much it will come to. So that is on the off side. But on the plus side is if he goes on these foreign trips and he comes back with, say, a train, a train line free of charge from maybe southeast to, to Abuja or from Lagos to Abuja free of charge for us, then it's a plus for us. But so it depends on what these trips are, what he's achieving on each trip he goes for. Um, uh, do you see a situation uh, where the president could have sent delegates, even the VP, for some of these trips as against him going? And um, do you think maybe it would have been as effective? I mean, benefit wise if it is if it's going to meet a president constantly demands that the president meets a president it is an insult if the president meets a vice president except if the president is indisposed then he can he can send his vice president or except if the president sends the vice president as a special envoy that is when he can he be free to send um, um, a delegate 
Okay, so there some of these trips, in your opinion, are very essential. That the president some of these attend. trips are very, very essential, and um, some of these trips are beneficial to the nation. Oh, we'll talk about the benefits in a bit, but let's look at the entourage. Uh, over time, people have said you have multiple people, mm. governors, ministers. So far, I think we've had how many? 12 governors, state governors, have been on trips with this president. Mm. You've had ministers, ministers of state. This is not to talk about media aides, um, you and know, journalists, and, you know, hangers mm. on and all of that. And till date, we've not um, gotten like a ballpark figure of mm. what each trip uh, stands for. Do, let me first, do we have any legal rights to know the amount being spent on such public travels? Yes, they're public officers. It's their duty. If the system were working around, they would, they, they would be accountable to us. Okay, this trip we went for, we spent $2 billion. These are the benefits we got from it. But the system is still, is still being pruned, uh, being trained in Nigeria. Now, considering his ban on some um, ministers, public officials rather, going on foreign trips and, you know, the effort to cut down on the cost of governance, does the president truly need such huge entourage every time he travels? He would, he would explain them away. And, uh, but if he's going to, let's say, Korea, and Korea has something that Lagos State needs. And Lagos State has told him, we need this thing from Korea. It, 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 it behoves him to say, um, Jide, please come along, let's go and talk. Let's see if we can solve this Lagos State problem. So I would assume that as right-thinking people, that they are going there for a purpose, which is to bring attract investment or attract something that their state needs. Okay, well, let's look at the amount that was budgeted for the 2019 budget. Uh, the foreign trip for this year will cost 1.75 billion naira. That's a significant increase from 1 billion budgeted um, for the purpose in 2019. Um, local trips are estimated to cost 775.6 million in the 2020 budget. As, you know, an enlightened citizen, is this too much? for travels considering the myriad of challenges this country faces? Well, we've always, we've always known that government is top heavy. And that is why people that are talking about um, restructuring are saying the federal, the federal is top heavy. Let us do without the federal and prove the federal to something and then let, let, us, let us cut off all of this. Because if it's, if it's restructuring, every, every zone or every state would know how to do their own. And it is, not most, it is not most trips you go for. There are trips that you negotiate over the phone, negotiate, and then the only thing you go for is one or two days to sign the already, already vetted agreement. The benefits of this trip, you know, each time he travels, we get to hear um, things like, I mean, these are the benefits, mm. they outlined the aids go on social media. Mm. Uh, there was one um, that was uh, posted a couple of weeks ago of the president's trip to, uh, what am I saying weeks ago, days ago, Russia. of the president's trip to Russia, the dividends mm. that come with it. What, in your opinion, are these dividends? Is it translating? to benefits for the ordinary Nigerian. You see, some of these dividends, you see, collecting aids for me is like giving you something with, uh, giving you a, a little muscle of grain and taking a big sack of grain from you. When they, when they give aid to a state, it opens the state to giving the, um, the country giving that aid beneficial terms to most of the assets. So it's, it's like, let, let's put it down to normal terms. It's like you have um, this uncle, and every time the uncle is saying, um, come, come take money for your school fees, come take money for your school fees. And then you qualify, and you're charging others 1 million, 2 million. And your uncle says, ah, come, do you remember me? I paid your school fees for you. Um, please, how much will you charge? You will not charge your uncle the same one million. You charge him about fifty thousand or hundred thousand, or if you're if you're if you're bold, you can charge him two hundred or five hundred thousand. That's the that's the main politics of AIDS. Do you think the government has a responsibility to make public 
the amount that is being expended on travels, if for no one else, mm. but for the presidency. Monies are budgeted, accepted, mm. but do we have accountability and do we have a right to get these? That is, that is, that is the funny part of the, of the setup. The, the executive, that, the legislation that should do that are all party cohorts, party, fr party members. So how can a party member go and tell somebody who he's kneeling down for that you should come and explain whatever it is to us? That's why I preferred um, the, the last Senate, because it was proactive. There were checks and balances. There were, there were real cries, and certain things were put in checks. But this one is, is, is it's, uh, I don't see them, I don't see them um, complaining much about what the government is doing you, because they are very grateful to be on those seats. If you were to, you know, speak off the top of your head, which of these trips in the last couple of years has the most impact for you from the myriad of trips the president is taking? The only trip that I would say got me interested is his one to Russia. But let us see how what it translates to. Okay. Another of these visits, the most recent, was to South Africa, mm -hmm. when he went on the xenophobic yeah. attack. And just last week, we talked a bit about, mm -hmm. you know, the resurgence of some of these attacks on Nigerians and other foreign national. Would you say that visit was uh, positive and beneficial to Nigerians, considering the facts? that there are still Nigerians who wish to leave that country that are still there. There's been no comments about, you know, continuing um, evacuation of Nigerians there. Um, the government is saying things are working, there is no more violence, but these violence sporadically comes up in parts of South Africa. Would you say there is a benefit to the president's visit? I was a bit taken aback because I expected Mr. President to condemn more wholeheartedly what uh, this, this xenophobic ad address and not put a bit of blame on our Nigerians. You know when he said that when you're in a country you behave or something of that sort. I think he said he made some sort of statement around that figure. But, but nevertheless, um, we are yet to see the gains of the travel, but until we see the gains translate, we see the bilateral agreement and we see the working force. Like um, I remember um, Russia was saying something about the giving us train. It would be nice. It would be nice to for you to want to go to Abuja and you don't have to fly, you don't want to drive down. You go to railway station in Ebutemeta and take a fast train to Abuja and get to Abuja in two hours. It would be nice, it would be nice to that I need to go to um, Medugri. I don't need to enter a bus two or three days. I just take a train to uh, so that's that's what we should be looking at. That's what we should be headed for. Social media is a strong tool today, mm. and yeah. these trips have been eliciting comments. Mm. Most of them practically um, are very critical of the president's mm. trip. Would you say it's a lack of communication of the benefits and essence of these visits to Nigerians on the one hand, or a failure of his media handlers to properly educate the people on the need and relevance of these visits? Um, first of all, um, the import of the of the trips, perhaps it is the import of the trips has been lost on his media handlers. Because if I was handling him and he goes back and comes back and tells us Russia says they want to give us train, ah, I will be singing it every day. You hear it on radio, you hear it on TV, ah, Russia says they are going to give us train. When they sign the agreement, Russia has signed the agreement. You should place it on people because if not, people will think they are going on a frolic as usual. On a general note, mm. should the president cut down on his visits, considering the myriad of security challenges in this country, an economic challenge for young people who find it difficult to get jobs, and they say this is his primary responsibility, not globetrotting. First of all, it's, it's not a question that I can answer you yes or no. It is in rel in rel relative to what, if he, spends, if he spends $1 million and gets something that will give us $10 billion, it's, it's a plus for him. Well, you, 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 these benefits are yet to translate to things that people can actually see. So w when I refer to social media criticism and people saying they don't understand why he has to travel, 
doesn't it all connect somewhat? You see, but, but what, what people don't know is that all this thing has far-reaching consequences. If I sign an agreement with China, like they signed with the um, recently Lagos State to build a port, now that port in the next two or three years will translate to jobs. Do you understand? And those jobs will benefit. Those jobs, it's like a wheel. You get jobs, you start earning money, um, the circle goes, more money comes into the system, um, the petty traders have money, the fishermen have money, the diesel seller have money. So it's like a circle. If, but what happened in our system is that the circle came almost shut down. So until the circle is reactivated by more of this, we, sh we need more foreign investment in Nigeria. We need more foreign investment. We need more creativity on the parts of our leaders. The, these governors that travel with him, mm -hmm. as well as the ministers that go with him, what happens to the work that they're supposed to be doing here? Because the, the, to a certain degree, their primary responsibilities remain here. Mm -hmm. There's a, a level of delegation that can be done. You are rightly identified earlier that there are limits to the kind of delegation that the president can do. Doesn't that apply to the responsibilities of governors? It is, you see, governance, governance is a chain reaction. The, 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 the president must not sit in Nigeria. He delegates. He has people that he will tell, do this, do this, write this letter, and they write the letter, he signs the letter. Or he now delegates to another person to sign on his behalf in certain cases. So likewise, a governor of the state, once he, once he knows his onions and he knows what he's doing, he should be able to have key people that will say, OK, agree, this is our policy, set the motion rolling. Economy, um, uh, finance, this is our policy, set the motion rolling. And then once, once those things have been disseminated, you don't really need the governor to be sitting at the state every time. So why do you think the criticisms are so high? The criticisms are so high because there's, there's a communication grab, um, gap and also because of the massive distrust the, uh, the, the Nigerian polity, polity has for governance. They feel that they're, they're squandering money, they're always on a frolic of their own. And, and, that, and that I keep, every time I come on this show, I keep knocking the uh, National Orientation Organization. They're not doing their work because they should be the ones singing about singing this song from the treetops and doing everything. But do they have the necessary encouragement to do their job? I can't remember the last time I heard of... Um, no, you, you, hear, you hear from them in 2022, ending of 2022, 2023, hear of them shouting. On what? On... Um, on Election. <laughs> oh, vote too. But did they do that much this time around? I mean, something you should do by this time, they should be sensitizing people. Go and get your voters card. The reason why you should vote, what you can do for with your, your with your vote, your vote counts and everything, and how you should vote. They should be singing it by now. But oh no, they'll start singing 2022 and expect miracles to happen. Let's go back to the trust deficit. Mm. You said the, the increased criticism could be attributed to, you know, a gap in mm. communication. How can they fix this deficit? Is it maybe the president should, you know, disengage the services of the current media aid or maybe look for an independent organization that will help him manage his publicity? Can I go back to um, General Ibrahim Badamosi? He will spend two hours telling us nothing. He, he perfected the art of telling, talking to us. I just love that guy. He knows how to get people. Our president doesn't have that skill of talking to us, telling us this is this, this is this. If after every trip he comes back and says, my, my fellow citizens, things are tough, but look at what we have achieved, look at what we have done. Or if he doesn't do that, his people should be able to shout so that they'll know that this money is not being wasted away. People are feeling that they're spending their money, the money that they should be sharing amongst them, and they don't see anything. And if you tell an illiterate, ah, our president went to Japan, he's coming back with train. He will say, mm, he will say, mm, tell that to the Marine. 
But if Mr. President comes on and addresses us, like after every trip, if he's going for a trip, he'll say this is why he's going. When he comes back from the trip, he said this. He will itemize everything he did and say yes, we spent money, but we are using money to chase better money for us. Maybe things will be a lot better. The president's body language, does it have a role to play in this as well? Our president does not know anything about communication. There should, there should be a minister of... Um, of um, we do uh, have one. Uh, you, you see, I keep saying they should, they should, they should put um, square holes in square pegs. So we square still, pegs in square the, holes. In the first tenor, mm. it took a long while for him to get people to work with him yeah. as ministers. The second term, he said he will take people that he is comfortable with, yeah. that have an antecedent. Now, we've had them in almost uh, going to a month, if not more, uh, in full capacity in their various departments. Would you say that all of these people are doing what they're supposed to do? Well, we, if you look at his first coming and look at the second coming, the tempo seems to be a bit up in this second coming as, a, as in comparison to the first coming. In the first coming, the first year went, we did not, we did not get it. The only thing we were hearing is Mr. President Pata jet in, in UK, and they were, they were billing us. That's the only thing we were hearing, remember? That's the only thing we were hearing. But now we're hearing, oh, he went to, he went to Japan, he went to this place, is talking. So now it, it's a lot better, but it, it, it still has a long way to go. It just the ministers has... are doing what they should, in your opinion, so far? No, ministers, we, it, it is too early to get the scorecard. But at least, we, at least some, there's, 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 some proactive, there's some proactive moves on. on, the, the, on reason the, I'm, the reason I'm bringing the issue of ministers is you talking about Minister of Communication, mm. helping him to rebrand his communications. We noticed this in his last tenure. Mm. You would expect that in this tenure there will be like a strategy to better communicate with the people what the government is doing. You see, that is why I preferred the regime of President Obasanjo. He did not take solely politicians, he took technocrats. He took people that knew what they were doing and people that, if you notice, his, um, the, 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 there was, we, we did not have communication gap during his regime because everybody was on, on, on top of that game. But not everybody can be President of Basanjo. President Buhari has his own style. So. I would say thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on this segment of the program. You're welcome. All right, we'll go for a short break, and when we return, we'll be speaking on the allegations surrounding the Niger Delta Development Commission and DDC. Don't go away.